see you at all. Well, Don't. are your eyes open? That's the first thing to check. Well, good morning, one and all, and welcome to those of you who are joining us on Facebook. Uh, we encourage you, please hit the like button. Please invite a friend. Uh, those things really uh, help us reach a wider audience. It is a good day to not be going outside, uh, yes. at least for a few hours. Um, those of you, unlike uh, old Robert and Larry and myself, those of you who have spent most of your life in Eastern Virginia may not know this, but we're so cold today that salt won't melt ice. <clears throat> and, and in fact, it was cold enough first thing this morning that ice melt won't melt ice. Uh, in weather like this, sunshine is your best friend. Unfortunately, like most churches, our, uh, our fellowship hall was built so that the main entrance never gets sunshine, ever. <laughs> so uh, it's, a, it's a good day to not be going outside. Uh, isn't it wonderful that it's always 72 degrees and sunshiny in internet land? <laughs> uh, we will talk a little more about uh, where we're at with all of this virtual church stuff. I, I, uh, the reflex for me would be to say virtual church nonsense, but it's not nonsense right now. It's uh, virtual church stuff. Um, but uh, I shared in today's email uh, a graphic of uh, hospitalizations. Um, these days, some of the smart people are saying we're looking at the wrong metric because uh, the maps show how many people are getting infected and Omicron is rampant, but it is not as severe as the other uh, strains. And so for most people, it's a nuisance, not a crisis. Um, however, um, hospitalizations in our area are trending down a little bit as are deaths from COVID, but they're still higher than they were at the highest point last year. Um, so that's not, that's not a metric I'm very excited about. We'll talk more about what we're gonna do about this and I'll bring it up again as more people come together. Uh, Janet, you look deep in thought and studious today. Why don't, why don't you take us to the Lord with a thoughtful prayer? Surely. Lord God, we gather today to hear your word and to hear each other's laughter. To give us uh, hope for the coming week, uh, Lord, or the as we go about our daily lives and hopefully do your will in, um, in each day. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as we're in virtual settings these days, I think one of the most important things we can do when we get together is hear from each other. Emily, I hope your log cabin is as snug as it looks. <laughs> it is today. Yes, it is. Yeah. Good. Thanks. You, you and we have power, you know, that's what happened the last you, time I've been with you all. We have power today, so that's good. Yes. Electricity is proof God still loves us. Yes. You have interesting artwork behind you, Emily. <clears throat> yeah. That's uh, my parents uh, took a trip to Egypt years ago, and that's, you know, uh, what they gave us as a memento so better than a t-shirt right yes i i have some uh persian art on my wall in my music room that is kind of similar uh, and um uh there 
there is a, a long stream of artistic traditions in, in the Islamic world in spite of the fact that in some of the Islamic world, the only art that's allowed is calligraphy. And that's got to be of the Quran. Uh, yeah. But uh, the, the art they have is beautiful nonetheless. Uh, Larry, how are things out on your little slice of Nebraska out there? Oh, they're okay. Um, this is the anniversary of my daughter's husband passing, so oh. just want to remember prayers for her. It's hard to but believe that's other than that. Other everybody's doing okay. I can't see the uh, AFL championship game because CBS or Dish is fighting with CBS, so I've got to go down to Fredericksburg. Uh, Sports Center, and I'm going to watch it down there because my grandson's having two flag football games today anyway. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Uh, that is irritating. <laughs> it will be Green Bay-like weather out there. <laughs> yeah. Donna, is Randy uh, uh, kayaking or, or ice skating? <laughs> Uh, just keeping the home fires burning right now. <laughs> He's got the fireplace going. So that's a sensible thing today to do on a day like this. Uh, Absolutely. So you know, I have been a professional storyteller. Um, we're more honest about it inside the guild. We say professional liars. Um, and uh, we, we believe that even lies tell the truth. You know, when you, when, you, uh, when you tell the truth, it doesn't have to be factual. And uh, one of our standard lies that every storyteller tells is about how it's cold this year, but one year it got so cold that I kept having to climb the ladder and saw the smoke off the chimney so that it <laughs> It would let the fire out and all that smoke just accumulated in the yard until one day in, in March, it all thawed and the fire department showed up. They thought the house was on fire. Uh, so Robbie, are you sawing the smoke off your chimney yet? There it is. Uh, I got up there yesterday, uh, but I only took the hatchet. Uh, okay. you know, I, I couldn't get a whole lot of it off up there, but um, coming down was fun. <laughs> no, down is always easy. <laughs> Amen to that. Uh, well, I, getting up there, the hard part of getting up there was getting the wheelchair where I can get back in it up on the roof. You just got to get a good run and go to get up there. You know, <clears throat> across the street suggested that. So, uh, we're planning on putting a ramp out in the front yard. It's going to stretch up to the road. And, you know, it, it's a good 300 feet. It'll be, it'll be a casual incline the whole way up to the top of the chimney. Do you remember when we were kids, ABC's Wide World of Sports, when they would say the agony of defeat, they would always show that one ski jumper who fell off. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be that guy. <laughs> exactly. Well, in a couple Sundays, I might have to miss a little bit of church. They go, hey, Ian. So uh, I'll let y'all know when that's happening. No worries. We uh, we had a a member in one of my churches who who did that every year. She was uh, a ski guide who who helped uh, paraplegics go skiing. And uh, Robbie, I'll tell you this: uh, we don't wish you any spills or chills when you go skiing, but please video it just in case. Been there, done that, got lots of it for everybody. Um, 
the one thing that I do that's different from everybody else, I am not challenged to get off the bunny slope. <laughs> spending the day on the bunny slope. So, I feel good about that. My kids took up skiing <clears throat> uh, when we lived near Boone, North Carolina. Oh, but they're both. What I took up was hot coffee in the lodge. I would look out the window and say, ooh, that's got to hurt. I'd drink more coffee. That's, that's my extent of skiing. I don't know bunny slope from a hole in the ground. <laughs> well, we'll have to sit down well, to get back together, and uh, I'll tell you all some stories. That did, well, hard to believe, but they did happen. <laughs> Those are the best kind. Amen to it. <laughs> Robert, what are your stories these days? You've been out skiing? Just a little tiny short bit on the way to open up the chickens and uh, some slippery spots on a small slope there. Um, they're walking though. They got claws. They're okay. Yeah. See you know out the window. Um, they could do a little slipping around here. What's well, going on? It's just, this is where frozen chicken comes from. Yeah, yeah. We um, <laughs> everything shuts down. We have two roosters at least to make soup out of. It's like and, uh, hens, of course, you got to keep as long as they're laying eggs, laying some eggs still. Uh, mostly just the round of working from home and taking care of the animals and the wife feeding feeding the wife and the animals. <laughs> <laughs> Always good. And the animals usually get fed first. Yes. Janet, how's Mark doing? How are y'all holding up? <clears throat> Mark's doing fine. He got back to work last week, although he's a little sore and tired. He had work a uh, six day week last week, but he's healing. The doctor told him he was healing um, uh, better than uh, a younger person, actually. So I, I t teased him. I said, what is the doctor calling you, old? <laughs> so, no, he's doing great. And Janet, this country girl, has pulled out her long johns. It's that cold to me. I have not had to pull my long johns out in, I bet, 10 years. And this year, I put them on, <laughs> even in the house. And we have a fireplace, too. So... There you go. Yeah, this is a little bit anomalous. Yeah. When we're driving back and forth, the place we check the weather is Thomas. If you can get through Thomas, the rest of it is easy. Thomas, West Virginia is right near that place that set the record for 31 degrees below zero last week. Yeah. Um, and this morning, the temperature in Thomas was nine. Here, it's 10. Um, that's not usually the way it goes, <laughs> but, uh, you know, thank God we're going to warm up in a day or two and yeah, we are. Know, it'll be something we can all just say, yeah, I remember when. Hey, Elizabeth, uh, you're still muted. I don't know if you can speak to us. We'd love to, to hear how things are going on your end. <clears throat> Elizabeth, we'll come back to you if you can find that unmute button. Uh, Bill Davenport, we're just kind of going around and comparing notes about the, the awful winter of 2022. Oh, it's not been bad. It's, you know, it, it is winter time and all that goes with it. So it's not been bad at all. How's everybody holding out? Nancy still doing okay? Nancy's doing well, uh, improving daily almost, it seems like it anyway. Uh, my brother uh, oh, has a diet of morphine, so if you know where that's at and where it's going. So, But uh, other than that, life is okay. Uh, my mother-in-law is, is uh, in rehab, uh, Nancy's sister, uh, and she's, she's improving, and we're going to visit her later today ask everybody to keep uh, both all, all the all the people uh, in, in our families uh, safe and and uh, pray for them thank you thank you bill um so you're reminding me that 
I have a cousin who's a really, really sweet person. She's not like me, uh, but she can be a little dense. And at one point in my dad's journey with his strokes and everything, um, her sister told her, Uncle Liston is in rehab. And she said, oh, it's always the quiet ones you never expect. <laughs> So she had a different rehab in mind, I guess. Uh, Elizabeth, you're unmuted. Jump in. Tell us how everything is in your world. Everything's going pretty well. I actually like the cold weather. Yesterday was the first day I have not taken a walk out in it because yesterday was pretty cold. <laughs> the wind but I enjoy is howling. Uh, but yeah, I'm... Uh, I would move back to Alaska in a heartbeat, but Barbara doesn't want to live that far from grandkids and I don't want to live that far from Barbara. So here we are, but. Uh... <laughs> well, I think Alaska would be bitter. <laughs> I like the Virginia winters. I'm just glad Virginia finally got a winter after five years. Yeah, we got a winter, didn't we? <laughs> it was a long Good time ago. Sharon Pardue, what's going on on the NASCAR circuit? It's been so long since I used Zoom, I forgot how. I know. I'm, I know. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, it's cold here, too. That sums it up, right? Cold here, although um, I, I won't be here for the full service because my sister's up for her birthday. So in 14 degree weather, we're going to go do the National Harbor Wheel. Better you than me. Let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> <laughs> They're enclosed. You just got to get to it. Can't imagine it'll be cold right there on the Potomac. No. Not. Nice to see everybody. It's nice to see everybody. Good to see you, Sharon. Missed you guys. We will be uh, reading the morning scriptures in a minute, uh, and we'll... We'll go over more in detail there, but this is Luke chapter four, part two. Uh, the lectionary has it broken up into two readings. The one where Jesus shows up and says, this is the year of the Lord. And we, we talked last year about the fact that he had very little evidence for that. Uh, but uh, this week is the week where they decide to kill the preacher. And, and we'll talk more about that. I, I, hope, I hope none of you are going to follow suit today. Just, I'm, I'm glad I'm kind of more, at, more in virtual land than, than at, in easy reach. But uh, there's a lot we learn about Jesus' upbringing by this little snippet. One is he's in the synagogue. And it says that was his habit. The synagogue system is not something that was born in the Old Testament. It was born in the diaspora after the Jews were carried off into exile. They didn't have a temple anymore. So they started getting together these synagogues, basically teaching schools um, where they would study Hebrew and they would study scripture and there might be a rabbi there, there might not. Any place there were 12 adult men, they would have a, a synagogue. Um, here's a, we, we know that Jesus was trained in the synagogue, very familiar with the order of worship there and the people were familiar with him. Here's a kind of interesting thing. The synagogue system was created run and maintained by the Pharisees. And all of the Jewish sects that we have existent today are descended from the Pharisees in some form or another. Clearly, Jesus learned a lot from the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees loved the synagogue system. that They were planting basically churches in every village where there were at least 12 men. The, the Sadducees 
hated synagogues because the Sadducees were all about the temple apparatus. And Sadducees are an interesting story. In the Old Testament, they go by the name Zadokites. And the book of Mo books of Moses are very clear about the Levites being the priests. And this is the practice right up until David takes over Jerusalem. And all of a sudden, these Zadokites show up, and they're the priests. And it's never explained. It's never discussed. They're just there. So it's an, an interesting scholarly thing to, to kick around for people like me and Robert who kick around things like that. Uh, what we do know is that although Jesus was constantly needling the Pharisees for their behavior and their attitudes, mostly what he was doing with the Pharisees was telling them to measure up to their own ideals. Jesus and the Sadducees they, they just went at it hum, hammer and tongs. And you might recall that uh, in the book of Acts at one point, um, Paul is being hauled before the, the Sadducees and he stands up and says, uh, I, I'm here because I'm hoping in the resurrection, which is something the Pharisees believed in and the Sadducees did not. So Paul threw down his Pharisee card to get out of jail free. Um, let me pause right there. Robert, I know you've got some thoughts on this. Have, jump in here. Of course, that card did not get him out of jail. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Paul in front of the Sadducee. But it did cause a big fuss among them all, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I've sometimes thought of like if all these kind of comparisons are very problematic, but it's like nowadays your Sadducees, I would think the equivalent now it would be your your liberal high church types, you know, all smells and bells, but you know the Bible may not really be true, you know, Jesus may not really live, but um, but your Pharisees would be your fundamentalist, you know, moral majority, you know, let's keep what God told us to do just right, you know, and make sure everybody does it. That would be so. Um, which always made me uncomfortable because I, I'm certainly not a high church liberal type, but I'd be far closer to the, the Pharisees, I think myself. So, <laughs> something I got to watch myself on. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the bottom line is no religious group is perfect. And I'll tell you why. Because most religious groups let people in. And people yeah. will mess everything up for everybody. Uh, in fact, if I had gone down and braved the ice skating rink and opened the church this morning, our church would have been perfect until I went in through the doors. And then 100% of the people there would have been crusty old sinners saved by grace. And... Uh, by the way, um, if we throw the doors open and all of you come streaming in, the church continues to get less and less perfect as more and more people come. So there are imperfections and flaws in, in every group. And ultimately, the answer is always, well, are you listening to Jesus? Um, and, and Jesus' answer is never checking off what you have to do on the list of laws, rules, and regulations. By the way, again, if you're from another tradition, you may already know this, but in the confessing traditions, and that would be the Lutheran churches and some of the congregational churches, and some of the Baptist churches that came out of that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they will have a church covenant on the wall and in order to join the church you have to stand up and go through that covenant and go yep 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 i don't know but yeah okay yep 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 and as long as you can check all those boxes 
then you are a Christian. That's pretty much Phariseeism. <laughs> you know, that's, that's pretty much um, fulfilling these requirements in order to, uh, to earn your way to heaven. Now, I'm not saying that all of the people in confessing churches are, are unchristian by any means. I am saying that if they are Christian, it's not because they fulfill a checklist. It's because they have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You all look deep in uffish thought. All of you seem to be awake. Uh, it's hard to see my eyes, but I can see most of yours. And, and they look like they're open. What, what are you thinking so far? Janet's closing her eyes now. She, <laughs> you know, my, my my thought is is that we when we talk about religion and talk about uh, the way people practice religions uh it, it ultimately comes down to just essentially one thing is just love one another yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, we, we overly complicate it, but it's really pretty simple. Uh, if we love one another, then we do all the things that are necessary to make that love true. Uh, so I think we overcomplicate religion. I really do. Yeah, I'd have to go with you there. Robbie says thumbs up. Uh, Cora's with us now. Uh, Mike, we've uh, been comparing notes about how have we survived this Arctic blast? And uh, how are things on the horse farm this morning? Well, <clears throat> things are cold as expected, just like everywhere else. Um, I have to go out after service and go take care of a horse for burial. Um, but. And, and I had one earlier, I had two earlier this week, but one of them, if, if you don't mind me sharing, it was it was pretty much a uh, an experience that I've never had in, in all the 500 plus horses that I've buried for folks. Um, it was a difficult grave. It, the, the, it was in an area that didn't warm up very well for a very long time. Finally got down as deep as I could and there was rocks and um, there was a large gathering of loved people that wanted to support the owner of the horse. And um, of course, there's always pressure if people are watching because you, you don't want to get it wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, had explained the whole process to everybody and so that they weren't shocked. And I didn't hear anybody say, oh, my God, when things started going on. But after the grave was closed, uh, there was other horses in that pasture and they had been coming around, but people were keeping them away from the open grave. But after the grave was closed, um, I started to pray and about four of the five horses started to encroach upon us in a, in a very respectful way and very slow. And before I knew it, they were amongst us and they were part of the gathering. That's awesome. And 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 I've never been so overcome by emotion that I, I bawled like a baby because it was just so intense and so it, it was so appropriate for what was going on. And those horses were there uh, with us for a reason. Um, and I and I felt not that I don't feel them often, but I felt God. It's no question. That's amazing, Mike. I think you should do the sermon today. It's much better than what I've got prepared. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to stop crying. <laughs> uh, Robbie, you look like you're poking. Are you trying to speak to us? There you go. Cool. There it goes. No, Mike, um, 
immediately is as soon as you started saying that, I can see exactly what you're talking about. Uh, all that you can say there is, uh, I saw God today. And that's exactly what happened. Came in to uh, just cherish you all and your other family members that were of the uh, canine, no, canine, oops, equine <laughs> uh, nature. There we go, of the equine nature. And if I know that if I didn't have these two dogs here with me, I would be a basket case. And they, animals take, animals show you that love's the only thing you need. Because that's all they do is love you. But thanks, Mike. Robbie, I'm just checking here. So what you're saying is you're not a basket case? I'm just verifying. Well, let's just say I'm a smaller basket case than I think I am. <laughs> Thank you, Robbie. We'll go with that. There we go. Okay, we've reached the 10 o'clock hour. We're going to start worship in just a minute. Mike is our liturgist today, and he's got long readings, so pray for Mike. Um, but uh, before we start, uh, I want to share a couple of things. Um, 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 there. You, uh, you may have noticed uh, this graphic that I sent out with the email today. And uh, as I said, the smart people are starting to say we're tracking the wrong graph, the, the wrong information because COVID is so highly transmissible with this Omicron variant, but it's not usually as serious. So what we should be tracking is how are we doing on hospitalizations and deaths? Um, right now, this is today's data on uh, Stafford County hospital admissions. You can see that it's fallen off since January 1st, but if you look at where we're at today, we're still way higher than we were in January last year. Um, and, the, uh, and this is just reporting COVID admissions, by the way. Uh, same thing with the percentage of beds used and the percentage of ICU beds used. It's falling off a little, but it's still way higher than it was a year ago. Um, so I don't know what this means to us going forward. Uh, it certainly means we should approach things with some caution and concern of, for the weak and the vulnerable among us. Um, and that's going to be important for us to do. Uh, at the same time, we are all getting kind of sick and tired of being sick and tired, ready to get back together. And so that's understandable as well. So uh, the leadership team and the back to church team will be uh, meeting in the next week to uh, discuss where we're going with this in February. Stay tuned for more details and by all means, pray for God's healing, God's mercy and God's grace to all of those affected. Uh, let's see, any other announcements we need to share before we get rolling? There was a charge conference, an, an annual conference yesterday. Um, this is a, a sad note. Um, the, uh, the Boy Scouts have been involved in, in a national lawsuit liability settlement. As part of that liability settlement, the churches that hosted Boy Scout groups are also liable. I don't know how that works out, except it's, it's how a lawyer's mind works. And the United Methodist Church of Virginia was on the hook for something over half a million dollars. And so we met to approve that dispersal of funds 
they actually gave us a choice. Do you want us to pay this out of reserve funds or do you want to have a special apportionment so that the churches can pay it off? And everybody said, let's pay it out of the reserve fund. Uh, so that's where we're at with that. Um, just want to make a nod to that and say uh, our, our hearts and prayers are, are with those who bear physical and emotional scars from that abuse. And our, our hearts are really with scouting because it's such a valid ministry and it's been so important to so many people. And um, this is a, a tragic thing to be going through. Uh, any questions or, or comments about that? Any, any other announcements? All right, I, I want to share. I, but what? Yeah, sorry, Robert, Robert. I was curious where. I was curious, curious where you got that chart. At least, uh, from the CDC, know what to look for. From the CDC COVID page, uh, you can. Okay, it comes Thank up you. with all of the counties in America, but you can pull down, drill down, and choose other information. Uh, so. Every now and then, it's good just to have an encouraging word, isn't it? Um, you all know I'm a Duke grad. I'm an incurable Duke fan. I was not a basketball fan at all when I went to Duke. But we're like three, four miles from, from Carolina. And they are literally 10 times the size of Duke. So we're surrounded by a sea of light blue constantly. And you just can't be in that environment and not get drawn in. You all may know that Mike Krzyzewski is uh, the son of Polish immigrants. He was raised on the south side of Chicago. He's a spiritual man in the south side of Chicago, Catholic sense of the word, but he is noted for being able to curse fluently in at least two languages. Uh, and does so with frequency. Um, but, uh, but he is a spiritual man. He, he uh, does do his, his prayers regularly. He talks about that openly. Um, just if, if you're not a Duke fan, you probably don't believe there's anything spiritual about him. But here's the thing. Yesterday, uh, Duke beat... Louisville and the hero down the stretch was a freshman named AJ Griffin who just did some spectacular things. So he was sitting with Mike Krzyzewski at the press conference. And AJ said, as uh, many athletes do when they're under the camera, it's almost a trope, it's almost a, a punchline, right? And I just want to give glory to God. And, and you know, it's kind of a, a throwaway thing. Um, but Mike Krzyzewski knew that and he wouldn't let it be a throwaway line. He stopped the press conference and he said, look, I want you to know what this young man has brought to us is his deep and abiding faith in God. And he has a personal relationship with God and he has started a Bible study for the whole Duke team. And that's all come out because of his faith. And, and I went, you know, it turns out that all hope is not lost. <laughs> you know, there are, are some youngins who love the Lord with all their heart and mind and soul. And maybe our future isn't in such bad shape as we might sometimes think. Any thoughts on that? Anybody want to come back with a, a, a conflicting narrative about Mike Krzyzewski? It's okay with me if you do. <laughs> Any other great stories about youngins doing great things? I know there are lots of them. Uh, 
All right, well, we're going to press on and, and uh, I don't know, I thought maybe we might worship together. Uh, let's see, Carrie, uh, we've been going around comparing notes about how are we doing in this Arctic blast? Any news from your neck of the woods? Um, yeah, I'm just thankful that it wasn't much of an Arctic blast. I've only got an inch of snow and not a single tree came down. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> After the last storm, <laughs> I'm just like, this is great. It looks pretty. I don't have to shovel. <laughs> Absolutely. Just stay off the ice. Exactly. David, how are you and Paula doing? <laughs> what? David, uh, how are you and Paula doing? Can you hear me? Great. You know, we're doing we're doing well. We're just staying inside. Um, this last one didn't ice over as much as the other one. Uh, so it wasn't any work again getting down to the animals and taking care of them and just uh, feeding the birds and feeding the cats and staying in where we're safe. So that's what we're doing. Thanks for asking. Good call. Cora, can you unmute? You wanna let us know how you and your mom and the rest of them are doing? There's oh, Cora. so far so good, sorry. Sure. Um, I don't get very good signal down here at all. I'm outside so I can try to hear it. But uh, mom, she's gotta, gonna be hanging pretty good. I hope you got on a good coat then. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and I'm not sure who period is. I've got period on the line here. Uh, period I is don't know. muted. Okay. We're gonna open with a word of prayer. I'll pull up uh, our notes for the day and i invite you to join me now in this uh, opening prayer this call to worship O oh god you knew us and chose us before you formed us in the womb fill us with faith that speaks your word hope that does not disappoint and love that bears all things for your sake until that day when we shall know you fully even as we are known by you amen now, Mike, I believe you're you're all raring to go and uh, uh, ready to uh, ready to jump in and lead us in some scriptures. As Pastor Larry mentioned, there's there's quite a bit to read, so uh, prop your feet up, get comfortable. Uh, and I'll try not to, uh, to bore in too deeply. The first reading is from Psalm 71. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, and the hand of, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel, for you have been my hope, sovereign Lord. My confidence, is, my confidence since my youth, from birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. The next reading is Jeremiah 1, verses 4 through 9. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. 
Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. The next reading is 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 10. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have any love, I have nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for the prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. And our final reading is Luke 4, verses 21 through 30. And then he began to say to them, today, this scripture has been fulfilling in your hearing. Excuse me, had been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, doubtless you will quote me to this proverb, doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Carpinium. And he said, truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a window, widow of Zipporah in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their, hill, their town was built, so they might hurl him off the cliff but he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is Thank the word you, of God for the people of God. Amen. Thank you, God. Mike, do you want to lead us in a word of prayer? Sure. Heavenly precious Father, we, we thank you for the opportunity to continue to be in fellowship with one another. And while it's not in person and we not we're not able to um, see each other personally and, and up close and, and do as, as humans like to do. We are so grateful for an opportunity to at least see each other, hear each other. We hope that the words this morning have been pleasing to your ears. Um, continue to bless our pastor and as he guides us along the spiritual path. And as always, you are an awesome God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Hey, uh, it's cold, but I'm pretty sure God's still in charge. Anything good happening you want to share? Any good news? Any prayer concerns to lift up? Nope, nothing good. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, just a prayer concern for Carlene. We uh, 
we went up Tuesday to pick up our horse from the Equine Medical Center. She's fine. She's um, always been rather opinionated and we are having difficulty loading her in the trailer. Something went wrong. Um, one of the bars came off inside the trailer, smacked Carlene on the head, knocked her around pretty hard. Um, and uh, being the, the bullhead that she is, she refused to go to the hospital. So we were on um, concussion protocol standby all night long, about every two hours, waking her up, making sure she wasn't you know, having any problems. And then I took her to the hospital on Wednesday and um, no fractures, because I, I was certain she probably had a skull fracture and um, everything was soft tissue damage. Um, but now the, the worst of it is she has a huge black eye mm -hmm. and she's green and yellow all over from here. And um, I, I won't, she doesn't want to leave the house and I won't let her either because I'm afraid I'll be taken into custody, perhaps. <laughs> um, we need to get you a t-shirt that says I didn't do it. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> well, you know. You know, in the days of, of not being politically correct, I could say that I finally have an obedient wife, but that wouldn't be appropriate. <laughs> no. Wait, did I say that out loud? <laughs> no. Uh, no, prayer, prayers for Carlene and her healing. And um, that's it. Amen. And thank you all for your love and prayers as we've been going through this past week. Uh, Barbara did have her surgery. It was a, an outpatient thing, no big deal, except that it's a cyst that came up where the original cancer was. And so we view it with some current concern. The surgery was like a breeze and Barbara is tougher than I am. Uh, <laughs> she's refused to stay off her feet and I finally gave up and came on home. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, um, you know, she's better at the waiting and being uh, calm about it than I am. So be glad to get that report as soon as we can. Uh, meanwhile, I will share, share this with you. Um, Barbara had been out most of the day doing some errands while I was watching mom. We got Antiques Roadshow, she's got a quilt. She's golden. Um, but uh, Barbara walked in and mom didn't know who she was. She just knew that we had a guest and she was trying to make sure that the guest felt welcome to stay the night. She kept asking Barbara, are you going to spend the night with us? I hope you will. I want you to spend the night with us. Why don't you spend the night with us? That's and fine. Barbara kept saying, yeah, 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 yeah. And <laughs> Marietta finally said, you can have my bed and I'll sleep in there with them. They don't mind. And Barbara said, mom, who's them? She said, I don't know that man that lives here. Uh, oh. Now, I just got to go on record because, you know, clergy ethics and everything. I just got to go on record. I, I'm an old man and my standards are falling and I'm still a guy but that's still way beyond my standards. <laughs> oh. uh, any, any other joys or concerns to lift up? Well, I, I'd like to just say I'm thankful to be here today. Amen. It's beautiful. My family's healthy for the most part. And I'm grateful for all the blessings God gives us. Absolutely. Thank you, Cora. I, I continue to lift up uh, the Potter family. Their um, Taylor's friend needs some um, prayers. They're going through a hard time. Continue to go through a hard time. Thank you, Janet. And of course, our, our prayers are with Bill's family as his brother is nearing the end of the journey. Um, any others? Got um, preliminary results on my CT scan Monday of my left kidney. And it's uh, the way that I read, it appears that the tumor is 
has been taken care of. Amen. Amen. And thank Amen. God for that. Finally, after two and a half weeks, Danny's COVID has turned the corner and he is recuperating. Woohoo! <laughs> thank God for that. We, we, we like to hear about folks who are on the upswing. Brother Larry, how about leading us to the Lord? Yep. Let's lift up these people that we've named. Lord, we just uh, we thank you for our many blessings. We ask that you watch over those who were mentioned. If they need healing, we ask for healing, Lord. If they need comfort, we ask for comfort. We ask that you bless them all. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We, uh, the scriptures today, the, the gospel lesson is about Jesus' trip to his home church, his home synagogue in the village of Nazareth. Uh, I, I've had to do this. Uh, when, when, uh, when you enter the ministry in the United Methodist Church, the first thing you have to do is go back and get voted upon by your local church. This is the church that knew me from the time of three cornered pants. And I had left, uh, I left home when I was 17 and never looked back. I had been gone for several years. I had, they had watched me grow from a snotty nosed young into a snotty nosed youth and they hadn't watched me mature into an adult. But I was going back as an adult to my home church to stand before all these people who knew me when I was 12. And I was the first person to enter the ministry in that church's 150 year history. I could have stood up and read the phone book and they would have voted me in. Uh, but it was a little of the same atmosphere. They, they didn't hear a word I said. All they saw was, oh, look how cute he is. Isn't that Liston son? It is Liston son. I knew him when he wasn't with this dog. Oh, he was a snotty little young. And, and they didn't, it didn't matter what I said. They were not going to hear it. Uh, Jesus, we can tell Jesus is starting out his career as a preacher here because he makes a, fun, a couple of fundamental errors. Um, one is when he had his audience going with him, he didn't quit. He didn't shut up. This, this is one, one of the, uh, uh, best messages a preacher can hear is quit when they want more, not when they want less. <laughs> uh, Jesus went right on preaching and he ticked them off. He ticked them off partly because they weren't there to hear Jesus the prophet. They were there to hear Jesus the little boy. I don't know if uh, any of you know that uh, classic subculture film, Talladega Nights, uh, where the hero is, it, it's, it's a NASCAR film. If, and, and I'll tell you, my, my first church in North Carolina was five miles from Richard Petty's house. It was six miles from, uh, I don't know, another one. And the point is, it was NASCAR territory. And I have tried hard to understand this subculture. I cannot do it. I had a son-in-law for a while who had graduated from a NASCAR college with his bachelor's degree in NASCAR. I didn't know that was a thing. I'm still not convinced it's a thing, but he claimed that was where he went to college, was NASCAR college. I'll tell you the truth. To me, 
you can get the same thrill by flushing Skittles down the toilet. Go and look at them going around and around. They're shiny. They're colorful. Look at them go. Oh, they're wrecking. I don't get it. But it is the number one revenue sport in America. So it must be gaining some traction somewhere. And the hero of this film was Ricky Bobby, who actually had a pretty profound theological moment when he said, I don't like Jesus all grown up. I like the little cuddly baby Jesus. When you say grace, you can pray to the grown up Jesus if you want to, but I'm gonna to pray to the cute little baby Jesus. You know, that's pretty much the same theology that the folks had in Nazareth that day. They were like, yeah, we came to see the cute little baby Jesus come back home, make us all proud. Look at him, he's got dimples, isn't he cute? And they weren't hearing what he was saying. And when they did get their attention arrested and he began to make his point, they didn't like what they were hearing. And I'll tell you what troubles me about this passage every time I read it is I can imagine saying, well, that wasn't what I expected here. I can imagine saying, you know, I don't believe preacher needed to go there. I can't imagine a sermon so bad that the lay leader stands up at the end of the sermon and says, we'd like to thank the preacher the guest preacher for this inspiring and moving message. And just one brief announcement. We're all gonna meet in the parking lot immediately following the service and we're gonna kill the preacher. I, I have preached some bad sermons in my time. This may be one of them. But I don't think I've ever preached a sermon that inspired a lynch mob. Uh, Jesus managed to do that. And as I read it, I, I go, aren't y'all kind of overreacting? And then I turned on the news. And as I'm watching the images and the stories go by, I'm thinking, you know, every one of these stories, somebody is irate because somebody didn't say what they expected them to say and they're hearing a message they don't want to hear. And they're actually people in America talking about armed insurrection because they don't like what they've heard. So are we that far from Nazareth? I'm pretty well going to pause the sermon right here and turn this over to your reflections. Tell me what you're thinking right now. Go ahead, Larry. You were unmuted, so I thought you wanted to speak. I'm unmuted, aren't I? <laughs> I think we're in a situation where people don't like what they hear and they don't seem to be able to have a sensible conversation about differences of opinion. They almost become radicalized, irregardless of which side you're on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Uh, anybody else with any thoughts? Are, are, are we in First Church of Nazareth these days? Bill Davenport, you're unmuted, but I don't hear you. Yeah, it, it's about civility. You hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. I, I think it's about civility. Uh, you know, we respect for one another. Uh, what has happened, uh, we we have evolved to the point, uh, leastways in the United States, uh, where we uh, it's okay to be uncivil. It's uh, it's okay to be rude. It's, it's okay to do all those things that uh, for literally decades, if not centuries, that it was not okay to do. Uh, how we got there, uh, that you can, we can talk all day long about how we got to here, but we're here. 
Uh, and I think uh, us as Christians, uh, we need to step up and uh, fight that or counter that. Uh, and counter that. And I, I use the word love pretty easily, uh, but I, I really think that, that we look at the world through the eyes of love and be patient and be forgiving and be willing to accept people as they are, even if they disagree with us, but to be civil, another word for love. Uh, but uh, we, we need to share uh, what we believe as Christians uh, more often. Thank you. And, and just a minor little story to kind of go with that. Uh, at one point last year on my Facebook page, I posted a picture of a little golden idol with its tongue sticking out. And I said, anytime you value your opinions more than your brothers and sisters who differ with you, you've embraced an idol and you need to get rid of it. And that made some people so mad that they unfriended me. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. <laughs> Mike, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I, I agree with everything that, that Bill just mentioned. I think that, um, in my opinion, we as a country do not have a common goal. We do not have um, a common enemy that, that draws us together in brotherhood to support one another and defend one another and love one another. It has uh, descended to the point where it is okay to um, just hate people and hate one another. And, and it's just, it's, it is, it, will, it is troublesome. It is scary. Um, it is, it is not a good time to be a police officer. It is not a good time it, it, it is through our entire moral fabric of our of our society in America, and it, it exists into the legislative branches of our government, and that we can't seem to accomplish anything for a common good. So even things as as unpolitical or un uh, dangerous at a personal level as falling bridges, we can't even gain a, a common decision for the common good of men and women. Uh, it's just, I, I don't know where we're headed. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Carrie, I always value your thoughts at a time like this. What What's on your mind? Um. Yeah, I actually think it goes a little bit deeper than just civility, because um, we've reached a, a point where, um, because of the income inequality, there are some people that, if the vote in Congress goes the wrong way, you know, their health care is in jeopardy, their livelihood is in jeopardy. There was a bridge that just collapsed because the infrastructure bill didn't pass in time. Um, so I think it's because of these real consequences be, that stem from differences of opinion um, that people are just enraged. Um, and of course, you know, the cure for that is to listen calmly to the other side, um, but it's just getting so much harder to do that. It is indeed. Thank you, Carrie. Anybody else want to jump in here? Jump in again, <laughs> another thought. Uh, but I, you know, it's a path. Uh, it took us a long time to get to where we were. Uh, it's taken a relatively short period of time, comparatively speaking, uh, to get to where we are. Uh, but all journeys start somewhere. Uh, and this can be our journey. We can start today and take the first step personally. Each one of us commit to taking a personal step forward uh, to that point where we can be comfortable and, and be Christian uh, in action, fact, and, and in fact, be Christian. Uh, the old cliches, you know, you eat an elephant one bite at a time, you, you travel to a journey starting with the first step. And I think if we all accept that and commit to that, uh, it, we can change it. It can, it can be changed. It, took, it was changed to what it is now, 
or what we perceive it to be, our truth, if you will. And uh, I believe that everybody has their truth and they're, they're, that's perfectly, perfectly fine. Uh, but we do have to, as Mike said, have a common truth. And for us to take a step forward to accomplish that, it's up to us to do that. Nobody else is going to do it. Uh, we have to do that. Amen. Thank you, Bill. You, you sound like you've you've got the weight of wisdom of you upon you. <laughs> Janet, you're unmuted. Sure. Um, I'm just sitting here and thinking about you know the situation Jesus was in, and um, even though we are adults, I we maintain these childlike qualities in us and i think as adults we hold on to these childlike qualities and it, it to me that's where my frustration comes from is that um we we retain the selfishness of a child um you know these are the qualities that we try to teach you know good parents try to teach children you know you're you're not selfish you learn to share you learn to care you learn to love there's so many people that haven't had that um it's hard for us um i think to let go of those childlike qualities and we we overreact um we don't love the way Jesus wants us to, and we tend to, as Jesus was treated, um, not seen uh, to be, you know, treated like an adult, like a like a mature person. We t we take the um, we overreact. We don't think. We don't share. That's it. Amen. Well said. Thank you, Janet. Mm -hmm. I'm neither a philosopher nor a psychologist, but I'm going to stray over the edge into a little both of those fields right now. I'm going to make a claim. I believe that the human animal is designed for conflict. We want conflict. And if you want evidence, you don't have to look any farther than the most wholesome family movies of all time, Disney movies, right? You can't have Snow White without the witch. You can't, you can't have the Roadrunner without the Coyote. You, and at our most basic level, we desire conflict. By the way, I've confessed to you, I'm a basketball fan. I made a basket once, but I think only once. Uh, I just enjoy watching. All sports are based on our love of conflict. So America was never so united as during World War II because we all had a common enemy. We knew what the conflict was. America was never so united as on September 12th after 9-11, because we all knew we had a common enemy together. Unfortunately, that unity didn't last as long as World War II's unity did, but you get the point. Here in the church, we often forget what the real conflict is. And that's where this comes back around to the scripture we read today we're not in worship to put on a show so that people can be impressed and blessed. We're in worship, not as a destination, but as a launching pad to go out into the world to find those who are suffering from the conflict, to find the least, the last, and the lost, the ones who've been steamrolled by life, by accident, by intention, what have you, to find those who are hurting the most and say, you may not believe it, but there's a church where you can be loved and accepted. You can find a new family and you can know a love of Jesus Christ.
that floods your soul and overcomes all of this conflict. Donna, I'm sorry, I've seen you unmuted for a while now. Perhaps you'd like to go back to the point or, or jump in on what I just said. Well, I just think we need to go back to our United Methodist heritage of open hearts, open minds, open doors, because we need to have our minds open and our hearts open to be able to open the doors with others. And if we don't listen, uh, when other people are trying to talk, we close the door before we ever got it open. So Thank that's you. just my thought on it. Thank you so much. Uh, Robert, wrap all this up and, and make some sense of what I've been saying. Uh, uh, let me just jump back maybe to the, the scripture, to the, in Luke there, where, you know, it seems what really got them peeved was this good, their good Jewish boy, they all knew, who was preaching good stuff and reading the Jewish scriptures, and they asked him, well, now, we know, it'd be really great if you do some of those wonderful things you've done otherwhere, and he says, well, you know, most likely what's going to happen is the people who are not Jewish are going to get blessed. And they and that what led him to a rage. It was like the, the people that God had not chosen. They'd be being pulled out, you know, scriptures even to back it up, which made it even worse, probably. <laughs> um, and that tribalism, with God, you know, endorsed tribalism in a way, um, is what really got him ready to kill him. Um, and I I think it's certain we're seeing a good bit of tribalism nowadays in our society where you know you you ask somebody their opinion on one thing you know what do you think of free markets what do you think about abortion you know you get you get one opinion on one subject oh then suddenly you know everything they're going to think on every other subject because they belong to that tribe that group um and if you're in like a a conservative uh you know i, I you know, comments after some article and it's a bunch of conservatives commenting you know, anybody who kind of strays off the, the, the approved opinion suddenly gets jumped on and vice versa on some, you know, more liberal bunch of uh, forum. Um, it's like you got, you know, no, that's outside of our group. And especially if you go on and say, you know, God's going to bless those other guys. You know, God's got something good. They're doing something good there and God's going to bless that. And then, but that's them. That's not us. That's not, we're God's people. How could, no, you, you're you obviously one of them then. You know, we got to kick you out because, you know, you've said the wrong thing and you're, you're going the wrong way. Um, we, I, Christians are not called to be, as you said, uh, Republicans or Democrats. And um, we're called to follow Jesus. He is the king. He is the, the Lord and savior. Um, it's his standards we have to go by and it's, as we've heard a couple times today in the scriptures, do the love is the way he rules through uh, with us, and um, and sometimes that means we're probably going to disagree with the people whose tribe we may thought we were part of. But you know, no, we no, we're going to have to part ways with them on that. Whichever side, I am. There are, believe it or not, some people in this church who I think if we sat down and discussed politics, we would disagree about everything. No, and sometimes way. even. Sometimes I even hear those opinions from them and it, it hurts me. I'm like, rah, 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 and I am glad they are in this church. And I'm glad I hear that from time to time because it reminds me, no, that, that they are part of my family, whatever their political tribal affiliation is, and my political tribal affiliation or cultural affiliation. Um, but in under Christ, we're they're my family, and so that's far more important, far more central than than anything else I happen to be standing on. And that demonstrating that spirit, I think, is one of the jobs that the church has right now. Um, so there. Excellent, Robert. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, this current age. I think the theme song ought to be. Uh, Groucho Marx, eternal favorite. Whatever it is, I'm against it. Uh, the lyrics are worth looking up. 
Uh, the line goes, for months before my son was born, I used to holler night and morn, whatever it is, I'm against it. <laughs> that, that's, that's America in a nutshell right now. But look, let's, let's wind up with this thought. The people that showed up at Nazareth that day did the right thing. They went to church with Jesus. That's what we're doing. We're doing the right thing. No matter how flawed it might be, no matter how failed we might be at living this out, we're doing the right thing. But Jesus said, if you really want to see something impressive happen, don't stay in church. It's a launching pad, not a destination. Go out where people need it the most. That's where you'll see it the most. And that's all I'm going to say today. Any other closing thoughts? Go ahead, David. You know what's going to happen? All right. All right. Gonna figure out that mute button right about the time we go back to in-person worship again. Go ahead, David. Okay. I, I just with the retiring Supreme Court justice made a very good uh, speech when he retired the other day. And what he did was pull out the Constitution of the United States and we all know how long that experiment's been going on. And he said, this experiment will continue and it will be my grandchildren and their children who continue this experiment. And this experiment has been going on with a lot of conflict, a lot of people having different ideas and resolution occurs. And we have to pray and, and hope that the people who have differences will finally come together and have dialogue and come to the experiment continuing for many, many years to come. And that's my prayer. All right. Thanks for that, David. Well, look, y'all, go in the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Stay warm. But when you go out, look for Jesus to do something exciting out there, because that's where the action is. In Christ's name, amen. Man. Love you all. Thanks Man. again for all your prayers and and support. See you soon.